I have a very strong belief that everything that comes into your life is supposed to, and every condition of your life is part of the perfection of it, and that there's a blessing in all of it, and that there are no accidents, that it's a perfect, absolutely, totally perfect universe. Everybody that you meet, you meet for a reason. Everybody you're sitting next to, you're there for a reason. You can either take advantage of it or not. You have choices to make throughout it all. At the same moment, there's an opportunity in it, and I never look back with anything but gratitude for all that was handed to me, because I learned firsthand as a very young boy how to be self-reliant, how to take responsibility for myself, how not to blame other people for it, and to find something positive in it, and always did. So that that little old lady who's driving in front of you at 20 miles an hour with the 1976 Cadillac, cream-colored, you all see her, she's everywhere. <laughs> She's got blue hair, and she can hardly see over the steering wheel. And she signed an oath that she will drive aimlessly around, you know, <laughs> testing your ability to deal effectively with her. You know, she's like a test. She's like a gift from God <laughs> to test. And it's like once you stop being mad at her for being who she is and what she is and what she's about, when you stop the anger and the bitterness at who she is, and understand that she's exactly where she's supposed to be. And she's there to teach you a very important lesson. Slow down. <laughs> you have to. <laughs> Relax. Don't give her control over the divine part of you. <laughs> the intelligence in back of that is suffusing your form, invisible as it is. It's still there, and it's yours. It's really what constitutes your entire humanity. Don't give it away. Think of yourself as connected to and a part of it all, rather than someone who is being victimized or slowed down or abused by or here it happens again. It's all part of the perfection of it all. That's a very nice, enlightening place to get to. It really slows you down. And it doesn't take away your ability to make choices. It takes away your wanting the world to be as you think it should be instead of as it is. That's what defines neurotic. <laughs> That's what neurotic really means. <laughs> to be wanting the world to be as you are rather than as it is. And for you to process it exactly the way it is. And if you see everybody as a teacher, then you ask yourself, what do I have to learn here? And it's like in that second that you're just about to be angry and go around and maybe even have a head-on collision or whatever, or maybe nothing, but still in a hurry, Maybe at that moment, that person is there. That person is there to teach you to slow down a little bit. They used to say to scientists, are you a scientist? And the scientists would say yes. And they'd say, well, do you believe in spirituality? Do you believe in God? And they'd say, no, I'm a scientist. <laughs> now, today, in the 1990s, you ask a scientist, do you believe in God? And they say, of course, I'm a scientist. <laughs> Science is beginning to prove what metaphysics has been saying for centuries, that when you study life at the tiniest subatomic level, the tiniest, tiniest level, that all of the particles seem to be on purpose and be, they're all interconnected in some mysterious way, and they're all sort of controlled by some force outside, some mystical thing, and they're all on purpose, and there's nothing random about any of it. That's all the new literature is coming out. There's nothing random, nothing happenstance in the universe. I find that so intriguing. If every subatomic particle <laughs> is on purpose and we're made out of those, then why not us? And when I see all of those people coming out of the, like when I was on Wall Street one day in New York, and I don't know if you've ever been there, at 5 o'clock you go to Wall Street and you watch thousands, millions of people, they're coming from underneath the ground. And they look like all these ants, like an anthill. There's just millions of people coming out from underneath the ground <laughs> on all of these little openings on all the streets and the subways, and they're all going someplace, or they're all going down into the ground, you know, at 5 o'clock. And I look at them now, and I think they're all on purpose. They're all like those subatomic particles. They appear random to us because we're so limited in our vision. We tend to view everything from the limited perspective of our form. When you know that they're all on purpose, it stops you. You know, you see that little old lady driving slow. You say, well, she's doing just exactly what she's supposed to be doing. She's right where she belongs. And you stop judging it and analyzing it.